So you've picked up a V4 auto trickler with the FX120i scale. You absolutely despise reading manuals. This video is for you. I'm going to show you guys the easy way to set up your new version 4 auto trickler. Chances are if you're setting up a brand new high precision lab scale for your reloading, you're either a very serious hunter, a competitive shooter or long range shooter, or a super serious fanatic that wants the best of the best. If that's you, make sure you head on over to mdttech.com. That is where I shop my chassis systems. That's an ACC chassis you guys see behind me there. They're the sponsor of this video, so without them, I couldn't make this install video for you guys. They also recently added some wood stocks, which I'm super pumped for, so the timber line is also available. So yeah, guys, thanks to mdttech.com for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out their website and shop for your next precision rifle system, hunting system, or just, you know, serious enthusiast, I want the best of the best kind of stuff, because you've got a V4 auto trickler. With that said and out the way, Let's get into the build of this thing, shall we? Now, first things first, I'm just gonna unbox everything so we can sort of see what we're working with. Then we're gonna start our way from step one in the manual. Don't worry, you probably won't need the manual for this video. My goal is to make the video as comprehensive where you could literally follow along with this video to get your scale set up. So in the big box, we've got our scale, some components to the scale. This is sort of the frame of the scale. I also believe in one of these boxes, we'll have a clear lid which is a big plus. Then the power supply to the scale is gonna be in this little box. I'm based in South Africa, so we have to use a little adapter plug, possibly where you are in the world, you might not need to use one of these. And then we've got two of sort of these size boxes and the flat box where I believe we're gonna have that clear top. And then you've got your manual. As expected in our large flat box, our clear cover is in there. We've got the powder hopper in this box. Some other accessories with what looks to be a little circuit board and some wires. A new power supply of memory serves from my version 2 auto trickler. I never actually used the one that actually comes with the scale. You use the other one. We'll confirm that throughout the course of the video. Then in this side we've actually got the V4 top section that is beautifully machined and already pre-assembled. So that's very, very cool. So we're going to pop this guy down there and then move on to step number one of the assembly. For step one, you're going to need to locate this 3D printed centering tray. We're going to peel the back off that and then stick it to the front section of this part over here. And what they're advising us to do is sort of use this front edge to touch on this section. This is something you can move later if you feel the need to by just sticking that guy on there like that. Easy peasy. Our next step will be to set up a frame that the power unit will sit on. So our first step is going to be to pop this guy in like this. Let me show you guys that there are sort of these two tabs that coincide with that. So that's sort of the indexing system. Now something that's a little bit different on the version 4 that never used to be the case is we've got these platform bumpers that we need to stick on these corners over here so we're going to do that now and we want to position them sort of in the center and that's basically going to give us sort of a soft landing that as the powder gets dispensed that it doesn't disturb the scale so I'm going to stick these guys on there this is very simple to do You want to make sure you get them in the center. And give them a good press down. Now we're going to pop this guy onto our scale like that. And then our next step is going to be to put in these supports. They go in with sort of a twist and turn motion. So once you've got them in place, you just give them a light turn like that. And they all go into place quite easily. There we go. The following step is going to be to add the sort of window. So we want to obviously leave the front open because this is where it will be going in and out with your powder. So we're going to put one on the rear. There's a sort of tab on the top here. You want that tab facing up and that is simply going to slide in like that. What I really like about the V4 design, okay, so the fourth rendition of this is in the past, you would need to drill a hole through one of these panels for the trickler to feed through and it wasn't the most professional looking thing. Also, if you screwed it up, 
there could possibly be you know a little bit of vibration or something because the trickler is touching that with this new design that can't really happen so we only need the three panels we're going to pop the fourth and spare panel over there our next step is going to be to add the clear lid so again we've got these bumpers here these extended soft plastic bits they're going to face up and then this tab we have here is going to face towards the rear and this is all going to index in there now this may require a little bit of finessing but you will feel it click in and index into place and just make sure that everything is nice and now because the scale is so incredibly sensitive the only air that could come in here is from this because all the sides are 100% sealed which means there's little to no disturbance on the actual scale itself our next step is going to be to insert the funnel into the housing now I feel this part for the money is very cheap but this is an install video not a review so you're going to lift this unit up the powder is going to come out there and we want to insert this guy into this section over here and you literally just push that in like that and you can feel it indexing on that o-ring then we're going to bring our scale back over and first let me cut this cable tie because it does say remove so okay that has now freed up that section and we're going to place this guy down like this now the funnel does not need to touch the side of the um, of the lid here and we're just going to rest this guy down there and it's going to index on three places on the top of this lid and it should index on all three of these places on the top of the lid there there and there and have a slight upward angle and you can visually see that by looking at it from the side and it's definitely leaning slightly upwards so that is that step completed and we're almost at the end I believe we're going to get to the electronic section next next we need to identify that if we place our cup inside the trickler on the scale that it is in fact underneath the funnel and the powder will fall in there now in my case I found this design to be not great and I use this area 419 funnel so basically all I have to do because the diameter of this is different is I have to move this centering tray slightly back and in fact I'm going to do that now just move it slightly back so that I can have my funnel underneath where the powder will come out so I want my cup to be sort of over there and I'm going to use this as a new spot to index that boom that's going to be perfect there we go so now we get on to the electronics our next step is going to be to insert the serial port connector now again before a little bit less electronic stuff to you this guy is going to go into the back side of the scale like that and we're going to use the provided allen wrench just to securely tighten these two screws so that it can't get accidentally disconnected something that i did find on the v3 if your connections weren't a hundred percent sometimes there'd be weird things with the powder throw so there we go that is tightened no need to over tighten this just finger tight our next step is going to be to connect the auto trickler to the scale now my port was sort of hidden at the back here we're simply going to take that there's a tiny little top end that protrudes on there and that is going to index on the top of this and that connection is very simple you can hear it audibly click into place if you want to break that connection you need to push down on the rear of this tab like that before you can pull these two connections apart so locking them into place that is that step completed now as with the previous trickler this is the power supply that came with the scale itself we're never going to use that we want to use the provided power adapter that comes with the auto trickler very important so put that one aside do not use it always use this powder connector now the time has come to plug in our scale I've already run the power cable up there's a little plug at the back here that we can remove that plug is located over there we're going to pop that guy out and plug our scale into the power for the first time and there's a green light that illuminates there that was very easy to see and our scale is now going through its sort of start up procedure super exciting then you're going to hit the start button just to fire it up and to demonstrate real quick how sensitive this scale is I'm going to blow very lightly on it before we get into the programming <laughs> always blows my mind 
Now next we want to install these two windows on the auto trickler themselves. So first things first, we're going to put this front one in here and we're going to slide that into position like that. And then on the rear, there's another window that sits over here. Now if you don't do that and you add the powder hopper and then add powder to it, you will have a desk full of powder. Ask me how I know. So our next step is going to be adding our first powder. Now my powder of choice for this is going to be Retumbo. That is the first cartridge I'm actually going to load for. We're going to want to make sure that this is open. You also want to double check that you've got both windows installed on the rear and on the front. Otherwise you might have powder possibly everywhere. So um, let's add some powder to that a little bit more slowly this time and you can visually see that let me turn this a little bit for our other camera angle but we can visually see the hopper filling up with powder in there which is quite satisfying actually i'm not going to overdo it because we're going to have to calibrate the scale next and here's where it could get a little bit tricky next we're going to install the powder hopper now very importantly you can only install this when the hopper is closed now by rotating the bottom section you can clearly see when it is open and closed and it actually won't let you install it in its open position. So there's a little bit of a fail safe built in there. Now you'll notice there's sort of a half moon shape on the back here. That lines up with this half moon shape that's on the top here. And this guy is literally just going to plop into place like that. And as you'll see now, you can also visually check in from the top. And as you turn the hopper, you can see that it opens up and closes. So our hopper is installed and that is in place. The lid is going to go on the top. Something that I also recommend when using this, as soon as I'm done with powder, I immediately throw the powder back into the bottle and I never let powder sit in the hopper because if you do, the hopper over time will change color and it looks icky and you're, it's not clean. And I also don't think it's the best thing having one of the best scales money can buy and then letting your powder sit there, being exposed to humidity and all of those things because this is not an airtight seal. What we're going to do next is configure the scale that it communicates correctly with the auto trickler unit. This step only needs to be done once and even if you unplug the scale, move its location or you have a power failure or whatever, you don't need to repeat this step. So our first step is going to be to enter the menu section of the scale and to do that we're going to hold down sample until the menu comes up. So my scale defaults to the setting that we need, BAS. FNC is what we need but theoretically speaking if yours didn't so just to show you guys in this is in fact what we're looking for but if yours didn't you could press sample repeatedly until you get to the desired display that you need so this is what we want next we're gonna hit print to select the setting now we need to hit sample again to cycle through menu options to choose SP with a small letter D there we go, that is what we need. Next we're going to press ReZero to have the unit 2 displayed. We're going to hit Print to select that value. And then we're going to press Calculate to exit the menu. And basically what that setting has done is that has set the scale to refresh 20 times every second. Next we have to configure the scale to wait for a stable reading before it dispenses powder. We're going to press and hold sample again to enter the menu. We're going to hit sample repeatedly until we see D-O-U-T. Okay, to enter that we're going to hit print. Then we're going to repeatedly press sample until we get to port which is already currently displayed and we want to set that to 5. So we're going to hit ReZero five times to get that to five. We're going to hit print to save that setting. And again, we're going to hit calculate to exit the menu. For the next setting, we're going to bring up the menu again. We're going to hit sample until we get to SIF. We're going to enter that by hitting print. We're going to hit sample repeatedly to get to BPS which is already being displayed. Then we're going to hit ReZero to get to the number 5. And the setting we're looking for is 19.2 or 19,200. We're going to hit Print to select that value. 
and then hit calculate to exit. Our next setting, we're going to bring up the menu again. We're going to go to SIF once again. We're going to hit print to select. Hit sample repeatedly until we get to BTPR. That's the one we want. Then we're going to hit re zero twice to set that number to two. Hit print to set the value and then hit calculate to exit. For the next setting, we want to set the response rate to fast. So we're going to hold mode until response is displayed. It's currently on mid, as you can see. So we're going to press mode repeatedly until fast is displayed. Slow, fast. Press print to confirm the setting. Calculate to exit if you need to. Now from version to version, the tricklers have gotten better and from version 3 we've had Bluetooth. So there is an app that you can bring up. So if you download the Auto Trickler app, it'll open, you hit tap to scan. I'll show you guys a screen recording as always. It has connected to my trickler. I'm going to hit connect to bring that up. And what's really cool, it'll detect whether you've got a version 3 or a version 4. You have a fast and slow setting, so you can hit both of those buttons. Make sure your powder cup is in place. I'm going to hit the fast. That's going to test the large section of the throw, so we're going to hit that. And immediately it's going to start dispensing powder. And I love the way that I can see it dispensing powder, so I'm going to hit stop on that. Then I can hit the slow section to make sure that the sort of last little trickle is working. So everything, as you can see, is working as it should. And I'm going to hit stop on that and then dump this guy into the top. Now, before we get cracking of the next steps, we want to make sure that the scale is in grains and not grams. Earlier, the scale was still default to grams. So to do that, we're simply going to hit the mode button. So now that we've got that, we're going to calibrate the scale using the new calibrate button. And I'm going to hit that button. And basically, what the scale is going to do it's going to pour some powder and it's going to tune both motors to work as quickly as and effectively as possible to get to a desired charge weight. So it's poured 206 grains and it's going to trickle now with the side motor on the right to get to, I don't know which number it's trying to get to, but uh, it's doing its thing. This does take perhaps 30 seconds, so it takes a little bit longer than you'd expect, but I mean this is something you only have to do when you're changing powder, so really not the end of the world. Okay, maybe not quite 30 seconds, it's more like a minute. Now I'm going to dump that powder into the top. So now we're ready for our first powder charge. Now let's say I want to throw 69 grams. I'm going to hit 6, 9, and then hit the giant blue bar, and it's going to do its thing almost immediately. It's going to dump that initial charge in, and then trickle up the balance to get to 69 grams with the little motor. Should start tapping off now, there we go. Okay, 69 grains on the money. And if you notice, there's a green light. That is a new addition. So when your powder charge is in fact correct, the green light will come on and you're off to the races. Now there's many more settings that you can use and tinker with to set up the scale where it's as quick and as effective as possible. It's not something that I've spent a lot of time on, but as you start using the scale, that is something you can play with. And the manual is quite good with explaining those settings. Guys, that is the setup of the V4 Auto Trickler. Make sure you are in fact in grains and not grams, because if you're doing powder charges in grams, you're making bombs. Okay, so be careful. Guys, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel and you found this because you were looking for an instructional video, make sure you are subscribed down below, because we do some other fun stuff on this channel too. For the regular viewers that have watched this that has no desire in buying a version 4 Auto Trickler, Thank you for watching, mad respect, and um, yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Okay, gents, ladies, reloaders, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.